Well, there's a lot of sectors for which carbon dioxide is a byproduct of what they do, and it's not necessarily coming from the use of fossil fuels, it's coming from the materials that they are burning, for example, in energy from waste, or it's coming from uh, very hot temperatures they need to, to get to with fossil fuel, but then what's released from uh, burning that material is carbon dioxide. So there are process emissions from the things that they're burning, uh, and that's what's giving the CO off the CO2. So even if you moved away from fossil fuels, you'd still need carbon capture and storage. Using carbon capture and storage technology in the waste sector is really important for two reasons. Number one, uh, we're going to continue to produce more rather than less waste in the future. UK government estimates that we'll be producing around 70 million tonnes of waste by the time we hit the 2040s. That's 70 million tonnes of CO2 in the atmosphere, so we need to find ways to decarbonise those emissions. Secondly, um, there's a really exciting opportunity to use CCS to create carbon removal uh, solutions through energy from waste. So 50% of our waste is biogenic. If we could capture that waste stored in the ground, that's CO2 we're removing out of the atmosphere, which offsets emissions in other parts of the economy. So I think CCS is important in order to uh, decarbonize industry and decarbonize energy from waste in particular because there are just no other ways we can reach our targets. The science is very clear, CCS needs to be a part of the mix, specifically in hard to abate industries, and there's a huge opportunity to build industries around this. Well, we see CCS as being super important to get to net zero. If you think about how the, the long uh, progress over the next few decades as you look to decarbonise the economy, you have the, your slice of, re of renewable energy, you have your slice of energy efficiency, then you still are short by something like 10, 20%. And there you have your carbon removal, which is the direct removal, and you also have the reduction of uh, CO2 emissions from industry. And, with, and this, without those two slices of removal, uh, you do not hit, hit net zero. So that's an incredibly important part of, the, of that whole net zero campaign. Uh, calculation. Energy for waste is a very important sector in, amid all these uh, areas of power generation because firstly it has a potential to generate negative emissions so it gives you an additional economic slice uh, to, to help these products progress and make sense economically and secondly also it's a good fit for a lot of modular let's say small and medium sized uh, uh, carbon capture facilities which can also make things make the delivery a little bit quicker and also bring the cost down a little bit lower as well. So it, it, to us we think that the energy for waste sector could well be an early mover both uh, in, the, in, in the Europe and in the US and also um, in, the, in, uh, in the UK as well. Well, I think we need CCS in particular to, to really deal with the large volumes of CO2 that we need to reduce. And it's not all about reducing uh, emissions from fossil energy. It's also important to reduce emissions from industry. Uh, that is difficult to find other measures than CCS. Um, with regards to waste, I think that uh, waste is actually contributing even more because we can also capture biogenic CO2. Uh, about 50% is, is biogenic and thus uh, help removing CO2 from the atmosphere. So CCS and CCU will be very important in order to reach the, the net zero goals. So why is CCS so important to decarbonizing industry? Well, it's just basically there are some industries which fundamentally can't decarbonize without it. They inherently produce carbon dioxide. You can't replace it with renewable energy. So take energy from waste for an example. So energy from waste, burning the waste, produces CO2. The only way to get to net zero is with carbon capture. On the other side, there's a plus there. Energy from waste, they're trying to reduce the level of waste, more recycling, more plastics extraction. So what's left is mainly biogenic. It's food waste, it's cardboard, it's paper. That means what they're burning and putting into CCS is actually negative emissions. It's removing carbon from the environment. So I think it's really exciting what's happening in the UK and Europe. We're seeing uh, a lot of projects moving into detailed design phase. We're seeing a lot of countries announce that they are going to move forward with clusters uh, like France, uh, money for industrial decarbonisation from Germany. Uh, and of course the, the UK clusters are in negotiations to, to move to contract this year and we saw Porthos last year take its final investment decision in the Netherlands. So this year is going to be a really critical year for seeing more projects sign contracts and move forward. We really need to see more national governments uh, across the EU commit funds to support, to pump prime 
the early deployment of CCUS, but we also need to see in parallel uh, efforts to develop the market mechanisms that will make sure that CCUS can be commercial uh, and subsidy free in the 2030s. I think the critical thing for uh, the CCS industry in the UK and Europe this year is to build on the progress of recent years and start to actually deploy infrastructure and projects in the ground. We're looking at developing our own CCS projects in the late 2020s, which are very reliant on using transport and storage infrastructure being developed by others. So from our perspective, we really want to start to see projects moving forward past planning and consenting through to the early development and commissioning phase so that we have the confidence that we can commit and invest in our own projects in the coming years. So the key action I see for delivering CCUS in the UK and Europe this year is collaboration. I think lacking standards, we need to be working across the private sector and trying to make things happen by collaborating across sectors, across industries, working together. The key action to deliver CCS in the UK and Europe in the next uh, 12 months or so is really to see clarity around the economics, uh, around subsidies and around some of the policies that will support CFD networks, the REB networks around, or the REB, REB structures around storage and the financing structures that will ultimately support the whole capture and transport and storage network. I think if you look at the last, even just the last few weeks, you've seen some very progressive moves around sorting out some insurance issues around the transport and storage side of the UK. We've seen a lot of discussion in the last six, 12 months around CFDs, contract for difference structures. I think that the business clarity is getting better and better by the, almost by the day and that's very encouraging. But we do need to see the final choices made so we can see that the, the, the funding, if you like, the funding mechanism can then be unleashed to really get these projects moving in the next uh, 12 months. Well I think the key actions to deliver CCUS both in, in the UK and, and Europe is not only for next year but for, for uh, several years to come is to have long-term and predictable uh, incentive framework that uh, we can actually, that the industry can actually count on that we'll uh, be able to, to introduce in a business model. Uh, we also need the development of infrastructure for transport and storage. And it's important to, to uh, get this framework also for carbon removals and how that is going to work, both between uh, companies, but also between states. So what's the key action this year for CCS? Well, CCS is obviously advancing brilliantly but it's been focused on the industries lucky enough to be at the clusters, by the pipelines. That means the vast way the UK industry can't um, access CCS. The key thing this year, in my mind, is to get that access to industry. So it means that those sites not on a pipeline can access it. Now I'm a director of 7CO2, it's, it's the cluster down at Seven Side. We've got six million tonnes of emissions there they're ready to go. The key thing we need now is access to the transport and storage and to governments to approve the non-pipeline transport, as it's called, so that we can start bidding in and getting those emissions in the ground.